All right, I've maxed out my credit card and I have with me today an i9, 32 gigabytes RAM, four terabytes hard drive, an i7, 2.6 gigahertz, 32 gigabytes RAM, two terabyte hard drives. Now I know what you guys wanna know is which one's faster, which one has better battery life and which one creates the least amount of fan noise. And I'm not gonna bore you with the benchmarks. I've got hours and hours and hours and hours of footage recorded. I'm down to my last three. I'm just editing at the moment. And after this spiel, I'm gonna walk you through all the benchmarks, all my testing, all that kind of stuff, and why which happens is which. The, the bullet point is, and it's gonna be funny saying this. Do you wanna guess which one's faster? It's, it's, it's funny, you, you watch the internet, you won't believe this. You ready? Okay, the i9 is actually faster than the i7. I can't believe I'm actually having to say this. Yeah, yeah, the i9 is actually three to eight, 20% faster than the i7 on depending on the task you use it for also something you actually won't guess now this this surprised me but once i realized and i monitored the hell out of everything I'm very detail oriented and i i looked into it and once i realized why it made complete sense but the i9 actually has better battery life than the i7 and it's um you can extrapolate it a lot I, I was getting estimate of over an hour more battery life, depending on a task you're doing. And the reason why, and you want to guess, you want to leave a comment below, you tell me why? It's, it's simple. All right. The reason why is these CPUs, when they turbo, they give you a third more performance, but at the cost of three times more power. So... You're going to be getting an extra gigahertz, but you're going to be using three times more watts to get it. So if the i9 completes the task faster than the i7, it is spending less time in turbo. Because it's spending less time in turbo, that means it's eating up less of the battery. That's it. Purely that simple. Yeah. All right. That's what you came for. You just wanted to know. If you don't believe me, stay tuned. I'm going to be walking you through every single benchmark I've taken. I've gone into Windows. I've used Intel XTU. Interestingly enough, if you set the same watt limit to both these processors, the i9 is slightly faster than the, the i7. Ever so slightly. I'm talking about 2.5 to 2.6. Ever so slightly. But it's there. Of course, this all depends on Silicon Lottery. I've done some coding tests, raw coding, compiling FMPEG. I've done some video encoding tests, I'm talking about F um, Final Cut Pro, I've done some mining, all that stuff. Stay tuned, enjoy the ride. Let's do this. Oh my God, what is this? Another MacBook Pro with touch bar. This is the i7. As you can see, it says i7 somewhere. Uh. Babe, it looks exactly the same as the last one. Just making sure that the Macs are exactly the same for testing. This guy's 32 gigabytes, this guy's 32 gigabytes. This guy's an i9, this guy's an i7, 2.6 gigahertz. Apparently, the slow one is faster than the fast one. So, I'm gonna make sure they're exactly the same, exact carbon copy of each other. I'm gonna test it out and I'm gonna let you know if the slow one is actually faster than the fast one or how much faster the fast one is. There is one difference between these two. This one's two terabytes and this one's four terabytes. I've tried weighing it with my hands. They, they, they weigh exactly the same, but you know, five, Nano watts might make that difference. We're gonna find out. I'm gonna let you know and uh, put this baby to rest. And I can tell you the truth. The truth is coming out today. The truth. Because I swear, I feel like online is just a bunch of sponsored people looking to get people to buy stuff using their referral links. Which, by the way, I've got referral links down there. You know, check it out. <laughs> All right, back to work. All right. We are doing this. On these computers, everything has been turned off. Now I'm gonna be turning off activity monitor because that will interfere with the testing. But as you can see, nothing is going on with these systems. Batteries are fully charged. MDS is not running, that's indexing. These machines are fully up and running and they're carbon copies of each other. So activity monitor will go. Cinebench. 
After four consecutive runs, Cinebench clocked in with 990 on the i9 and 942 on the i7, with matching CPU temps and fan noise levels. In the OpenGL test, the i9 clocked in 5-6 to six frames higher than the i7 in both runs. Coding. One, two, three, go. For my Xcode project on the first clean and compile, the i9 clocked in 3% faster, coming in at 16.1 seconds, and the i7 at 16.6. And on the second rebuild, the i9 came in 6% faster. One, two, three, go. Taking a look at compiling larger code bases, the i9 performed 4% faster at compiling FFMPEG from source, clocking in at 273 seconds, with the i7 clocking in at 284 seconds. For the iOS simulator, well, that only took 0.1 seconds longer to launch on the i7 compared to the i9, and using it caused similar heat and fan levels. Final Cut Pro. Launching Final Cut Pro was neck and neck. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Stabilizing a 5 minute clip was 6% faster, with the i9 clocking in at 6 minutes and 22 seconds, and the i7 taking 6 minutes and 45 seconds. Exporting the FX Heavy Bruce X project was only 2 seconds slower on the i7, so to better test the difference I duplicated Bruce X 10 times and exported that, which took the i9 7 minutes and 37 seconds and the i7 7 minutes and 46 seconds. I didn't notice any difference in the playback performance of an unrendered H.264 based project, but I did notice that the fans on the i9 were slower to ramp than the i7, due to the i7 drawing slightly more power. Just look at this snapshot. Here, the power draw seems very similar, but on closer inspection, you can see that the peaks are steeper on the i7. For the actual export, exporting a short clip at 1080p best quality, the i7 came in at 2 seconds behind the i9. These differences compounded when exporting a longer multicam 10 minute clip. With the i9 taking 26 minutes on the dot and the i7 taking an extra 65 seconds to complete, giving the i9 a 4% edge in Final Cut Pro exports. Encoding. All right, in this test, I'm just gonna be transcoding this into H.265. For vanilla CPU encoding a 4K DJI drone clip, the i9 took 20 minutes and 15 seconds to encode four minutes of footage, and the i7 took 20 minutes and 48 seconds. Interestingly though, and we'll be looking into this in more detail in the battery life section, the i9 was using slightly less power draw to get the faster speeds compared to the i7. On the i9, after a power limit throttle, the i9 drops lower than the i7 does. Mining. <sighs> now it's time for some good old fashioned mining. Crypto was an easy win for the i9. With 3 megabytes more L3 cache, it was able to hit 3 gigahertz mining around 200 hashes a second, with the i7 hitting 2.4 gigahertz mining 120 hash a second. So. <laughs> So if you're doing heavy number operations, this is what you want an i9 for, as here it's getting a 66% boost. We're gonna do dual core action here to see how fast our CPUs can go. For ultimate performance, these chips go their fastest in under 50 degrees Celsius and when performing dual core operations. So right now on the i7 we're hitting 4.06, on the i9 we're hitting 4.3. So next up what we're gonna do is limit the cores to two. Since I'm based in Australia, 50 degrees is out of the question. But after limiting the CPU to use dual cores, we can see that the i9 clock 4.6 GHz and the i7 clock 4.2 GHz. Now that we only have two cores, we're hitting 4.2 on the i7 and we're hitting 4.6 on the i9. Web. The World Wide Web is a perfect place for single and dual core operations, with websites primarily coded in JavaScript, which is predominantly single threaded. So I figured the i9 might edge loading websites here, but after loading a few sites, the main bottleneck was clearly bandwidth. I also ran two web app heavy benchmarks in which the i9 performed slightly better than the i7. However, one interesting note is that in the Jetstream bench, the i9 boosted faster than the i7 and hit high temps, which ended up causing the fans to spin up to an audible 4,500 RPM, while the i7 stayed at a cooler 3,000 RPM at only a 5% performance penalty. So while the i9 was slower to kick up the fans during a Final Cut Pro playback, the i9 was clearly faster to kick up the fans during a web app benchmark. 
destroyer of the worlds. Now for this test, I want to see how the processor is affected by running multiple intensive apps at the same time. So I'm going to start FFmpeg converting a video and then I'm going to launch Final Cut. Before getting into battery life, I wanted to run a final destroyer of worlds test to see how stable the systems were. All right, so as you can see on the i7, it's going about 2.4, 2.5. And on the i9, it's going 2.6, 2.8, 2.9. This one's 4.9 FPS. This one's 4.7 SPF FPS. As you can see, the FFMPEG and Final Cut Pro still encoded faster on the i9. Battery life. All right, this is an interesting one. One, two, three. I ran a comprehensive set of tasks ranging from compiling and running an Xcode iOS app to playing a YouTube to Final Cut Pro playback and export. In the end, the i7 drained 1830 milliamps and the i9 drained 1603 milliamps after half an hour's usage, which is a delta of 227 milliamps or 14%. With this load of, I'd say, heavy professional usage, compiling code and video editing on a linear scale, the i7 would last two hours and the i9 would get you an extra 18 minutes. Looking at the reason why, just take a look at the power management of the units. Even during simple YouTube playbacks, you can see that the i7 has more aggressive peaks than the i9. This trend continued on every task that requires the unit to get into turbo. Here, in Final Cut Pro, higher peaks. Here, launching Xcode, higher peaks. And of course, most importantly, as high load tasks were completed slightly quicker on the i9, the i9 would only turbo for shorter periods for the same task. And as turbo requires a lot more power than a regular base clock speeds, the i7 would eat into the battery life for slightly longer, compounding those small percentage performance decrements into worse battery performance. <sighs> You're such a geek, babe. <laughs> Windows. To finish up the analysis, let's get back into the world of Throttle. Windows, which is still the wild, wild west of TDP, as the Throttle patch Apple released only targeted Mac OS. So, as you can see, both units thermal throttle by default. And just a note for gaming, I didn't notice any difference between them as all the games I tried were GPU bound. Maybe if you have a beefier eGPU, the difference between the i9 and the i7 would come into play, but using stock graphics it didn't. Okay, so what's interesting is, when I clocked both units to use only 30 watts, the i9 was clocking in at 0.1 GHz faster than the i7. Okay, it's not much of a difference here, but it does demonstrate why the i7 demands ever so slightly more energy when turbo boosting. And that is it, you have just heard the incredible Nora Cairo giving you a voiceover for this geeky super nerd. I hope you've enjoyed this video, I certainly had trouble reading that script. Good luck to all of you guys out there who are deciding i9 versus the i7. Vamos. Arrivederci. Thank you very much. Please, anyone out there, I've used up enough cycles of my battery testing these claims that I'm making. Please, someone out there, I'd love to get some more reviews to see what you guys make of it because I do not want to use any more battery cycles. I actually want to keep one of these units. I'm not sure which one yet, to be honest. You know, for me, it's more about the cost of the terabyte hard drive than the, the cost of um, CPU. My recommendation is firstly upgrade your RAM and SSD and then go into the, the CPU because man, I didn't think I needed 32 gigabytes, but I do. The, these computers just eat up as much RAM as possible. It makes Final Cut run faster, makes everything just run smoother the more RAM you've got. And the more hard drive space you got, I didn't think I'd be using four terabytes. I'm actually using four terabytes. <laughs> caching anyway. All right, so what do you guys think of the results? Let me know in the comment below which unit you're going to be getting. I hope you're happy with your purchase. I am. Make sure you get Apple Care. I've got um, a 13 inch MacBook here. It's had its logic board replaced twice. I've just got it repa replaced. Uh, they give me a new keyboard. They give me a new battery. They give me a new log logic board. And I've saved so much by having Apple Care. Obviously, you can say that these Macs should be more reliable, but I use the hell out of these systems. I'm talking about, I, I use them, I use them hard, I use them hard. So it's really nice having Apple Care. seriously. They even give you accidental damage. You can throw water on it and get it replaced. It's built into your contract. <sighs> I don't know why, I've, I've, I've been awake for so many days trying to figure this out. Doing so much benchmarks, it was my wife's birthday yesterday. I took it to SeaWorld, that's the only break that I took, but... <laughs> All right, take it easy. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. Let me know which Mac you're going to be getting. If you don't need a portable, wait for the iMacs, the refreshed versions. They're going to have six to core, 
six to eight core chips inside them. They're not going to be firm or throttled as much as these guys. They're not going to be power limit throttled. They're going to be stuck straight into the, the DC. They're going to be getting some serious power in there. They're going to be faster than the iMac Pros. They're going to have a refresh design. Rumoured, but I'd wait for that if, I, if you don't need a portable. But if you do need a portable, then I'm very happy with these purchases. I, I, I recommend them, so enjoy. For those of you who are concerned about battery life, if you look at the core what usage, that's hovering between 18 to 30 because it's constantly turboing above its 2.9 base lip rate. So you can see here it's using a lot of power. The whole CPU unit goes up to 30 watts at, in this case, where it's going to 40 now. So I can just disable turbo boost and you can see the clock speed drops down to around 2.9 but look how healthy that is 10-15 watts for the whole CPU unit and the cores are using up to 10 watts 5 at the moment so it's gone from a spike up to 40 all the way down to around 